Good afternoon. I want to thank you for joining us both in person and online for Washington's annual Worker Memorial Day ceremony. My name is Joel Sachs, and I'm the director of the State Department of Labor and Industries. I want to welcome all of our honored guests here to LNI, and especially I want to welcome the families of fallen workers and your guests, as well as members of our LNI community. Welcome, Governor Inslee. And the governor will be joining us and speaking with us in just a few minutes. And Trudy, thank you also for attending. We appreciate and welcome all of our guests. And I want to thank our sign, our sign language interpreter and our, and our Spanish interpreter. For all of our visiting families and for all of our guests, I'm going to, I'm going to quickly walk you through what our, our ceremony today. We're going to start from hearing from the governor as well as business and organized labor leaders. Then we're gonna honor your loved ones by reading their names and ringing a bell for each of them. After you have an opportunity to hear from a representative from Kids Chance of Washington, we're gonna invite you to gather outside to ring our garden memorial bell. You'll, you'll have an opportunity at that, at, at that time if you choose to share something with, with, uh, with our community about your loved one. Now I wanna ask you all to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Joining us now with the invocation is Je Jeffrey Jones, the chaplain and religious coordinator at the Department of Corrections Center in Little Rock, Washington. Good afternoon. Shall we pray? Creator and sustainer of all that is or will ever be, accept our thanks for this day and all its blessings. We ask that you comfort, guide, and sustain the families through the difficult times. Grant that each of us may feel you in our time of need. We are thankful for the sacrifice of these family members to our community, to our state, and to our country. Bless our fellowship today and bless this memorial and remembrance. In the name of all that is righteous, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Jones. Our Worker Memorial Day event is a, in, incredibly important to me and to all of us here at the, 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 the Department of Labor and Industries. To each of you who've lost a loved one to a workplace illness or injury, we offer our very heartfelt condolences. We, ha we do have some members of our LNI community that I'd like to acknowledge today. I especially want to thank our pension adjudicators who work with families through such an incredibly and, and difficult time. I also want to thank our LNI safety and health officers. They, they have the very difficult job of investigating workplace 
depths to figure out what went wrong and to find ways to prevent it from ever happening again. This is a, a milestone year for L&I and for worker safety. It marks the 50th year since the legislature established the Washington Industrial Safety and Health Act. Back in 1973, there were almost 200 worker fatality claims in our, in our state. 50 years later, we've made some headway in reducing that number, yet we're here today. We're here at another ceremony to honor and remember workers who died on the job. I think for all of us, that's a stark reminder that we still have a lot of work to do. And that's why we come to a ceremony like the one today, to recommit ourselves, to look ahead to the next 50 years, to reaffirm what we can do to prevent workplace injuries, illnesses, and deaths. And when I say we, I really do mean all of us. While I can start with our L&I community, it goes well beyond our L&I com community. It includes employers, workers, safety officers, tra unions, trade associations, legislators, just to name a few. I believe it really does take all of us working together to ensure that every member of our Washington community gets to go home at the, at the end of the day. I think our commitment today needs to be to consistent and continual vigilance to pay attention to workplace safety and, and health. What I know and everything that we know about workplace safety is that it starts from the top. It starts with, it starts with true leadership. And that's why it's both my honor and my privilege to introduce our leader. And in the, someone who, who I know firsthand works tirelessly each and every day for the benefit of Washingtonians across the state. Please join me in welcoming Governor Jay Inslee. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here today. Uh, thank you for three reasons. Uh, number one, it allows us to demonstrate our empathy and our heartfelt concern for you and, and your families who have lost loved ones. And Trudy and I only bring two hearts to this event, but we represent eight million uh, arms that would like to embrace you today and realize uh, the pain that you have felt and to some degree still are. And our hopes are that as time goes on, when you think of your loved one, instead of the pain that you have felt, that you will remember the tremendous moments you had with your loved one. And that as you think of them, you will think of the good times, the fun times, the embracing times, the times you were together. And that's our hope that that fills you with a, a warm feeling as time goes on. That's our hope from 8 million Washingtonians. The second reason we wanted to share a message with you is that your loved one was a special person. Uh, probably for many reasons. But from our standpoint, from the state of Washington, they were special because they lost their lives working for their community, building homes for people to live in, fighting fires, nurse, uh, nurses providing health care. You know, we're all mortal, but your loved one was, it was special in the sense that they lost their lives helping other people in some sense. And we want to honor your commitment and their commitment. And the third uh, reason we are glad you're here is that you inspire us. You inspire me to be even more diligent in our efforts to reduce these losses on the job. You inspire Joel. You inspire everyone at the Labor and Industries Department. And you inspire all the employers across the state of Washington. So you're messengers of hope for us that we can continue to drive down the numbers of, of lost lives. And as Joel has indicated, we've, we've made some progress, but we are so far from zero, which is our target. And that is something we find we hold very, very dear. I, I will share with you that 
that we're making some progress. I'll just note one thing that we have done this year is we can, can, uh, got the Washington State Legislature to pass a bill to protect uh, Washington State workers on our highways. And you know these people are really in dangerous positions working inches from people driving by at 65 miles an hour. And we got the legislature to do something to increase safety for that one group of employees. And we are always looking for things like that to try to ha allow people to come home safely. So I want to thank you for continuing to inspire us. I want you to know you're not alone. You've got 8, or million, 8 million Washingtonians with you. And uh, we wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Worker Memorial Day events are actually occurring in communities and work sites all around the country and, and really all around the world this, this week and, and, and next. But here at LNI, our event's a little bit different than, than others. Ours is a joint observation that includes government, organized labor, and the business community. Being together symbolizes Washington's cooperative approach to creating safer workplaces for all workers. Our next speakers exemplify that cooperation as they represent both workers and employees. Next, you'll hear from Sharika Carter, who's the Secretary Treasurer of the Washington State Labor Council, AFL-CIO. The Labor Council is the largest labor organization in our state it's a nonprofit group dedicated to improving workplace rights for working people and their families. After Sharika, we'll hear from Bob Battles. Bob is the general counsel and government affairs director of the Association of Washington Business. It's the oldest and largest statewide business organization representing nearly 7,000 members. Sharika, thank, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Joe. Like Joe said, my name is Sharika Carter. I use she, her pronouns, and I have the pleasure of serving as the secretary treasurer of the Washington State Labor Council, AFL-CIO. On behalf of the Washington State Labor Council's 600 affiliated unions with more than half a million members, thank you for inviting me here today. To the families who have lost loved ones due to work-related injuries or illnesses in Washington, no words can sufficiently express sufficiently express our sincere condolences. We have a saying in the labor movement, and it's attributed to a great trade unionist activist from more than a century ago named Mothers Jones. And we say, mourn for the dead, but fight for the living. Llorar por los muertos y luchar por los vivos. We're here today to do that, to do both of those things, starting with honoring Washington's fallen workers we must remember them. Not only as grandparents, parents, sons, daughters, and siblings, but also by acknowledging the impact their loss of life or serious injury has on their families and their livelihoods. That's why we have a workers' compensation system, and that's why the law sets the following goal, to provide sure and certain relief for workers injured in their work and their families' independence. I know that the system isn't perfect and it requires constant attention to make sure it delivers on that promise. But I wanna thank the hardworking employees here at the State Department of Labor and Industries for making it their mission to achieve that goal. And I also want to thank, thank you for your other mission to strive to prevent these work injuries and illnesses from happening in the first place. Together, we continue to make progress on that front. For example, as temperatures continue to rise, labor strongly supports our state's new heat rules that are protecting agricultural construction and other workers exposed to these dangerous outdoor temperatures on the job. Obviously, more work must be done to protect Washington's workers, and that's why unions will continue to raise our collective voices to win stronger safety and health protections in our workplaces and stronger job safety and health laws that protect all workers. We will continue to hold employers accountable 
when they have unsafe working conditions, and we will continue to fight for workplace conditions that ensure everyone goes home to their families at the end of a shift, alive, uninjured, and without the chronic illnesses caused by work exposures. Hoy nos volvemos a dedicar hasta la lucha. Today we mourn the dead and rededicate ourselves to fighting for the living. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Bob Battles. I'm with the Association of Washington Business, and I'm their general counsel and director of government affairs. I'm here on behalf of both the Association of Washington Business, and today I'm also speaking on behalf of the Washington Self-Insurance Association, who was not able to be here today, but really wanted to send their uh, a message that they, uh, they wish they could have been here, but of conflicts. Together, our members employ over 50% of the state's workers. It is our honor and privilege to speak with you under these circumstances that can only be described as heartbreaking. On behalf of our collective members, I want to extend my sympathies and prayers. I also want to acknowledge and honor your loved ones. Today, we all grieve. Every year when I take part in this ceremony, it is always my hope, really my dream, that it would be the last one. Yet here we are again marking the sad occasion of 129 lives. We are grateful for each of the 129 lives that we celebrate today. We are grateful for the important work that they did to support their families and the community. We are grateful that we have the opportunity to love them and be loved by them. There is nothing I can say today to take away the emptiness for your loss. My faith tells me that they are in a better place, but that is little consolation and does not erase the pain. What I can say is, and what I will do to honor your loved ones, is to renew my personal commitment to workplace safety. I have personally been involved with the workplace safety and health issues for over 30 years. I have personally been there with families and co-workers that have learned their loved ones will not come home. This is very personal to me as it is to each one of us in this room. As I prepare for this day, I did some personal reflection. I reflected on my coworkers. I reflected on my family. I reflected on the LNI employees. And I reflected on the names that will be read here today. Every year I ask these questions, and I guess I challenge each one of you to do the same. Are we making safety a priority? Are we looking out for each other? And are you making a commitment that everyone goes home? To the LNI employees, thank you for what you do. You have a difficult job, and most of the time, both business and labor are not excited to see you. But without you, we would be less safe. So I say with you, we are safer. Our lives literally depend on you doing your jobs, so thank you. To the first responders here, thank you for taking on the difficult task of being there when people are facing some of the most difficult times of their life. You see firsthand what happens when there is a culture of safety and when there is not, thank you for your service to the friends and family of the loved ones that are here today that we mark. Take comfort in knowing 
that you have, that they have left their legacy on both family and friends. We join you today in celebrating their life and honoring their memories. And until the time comes when there is no need for remembrance such as this, we will continue to dedicate our lives to workplace safety and health. Everyone deserves to come home safely at the end of the day. Thank you for allowing me to share some of my thoughts. On behalf of AWB, WSIA, and the thousands of employers we represent, thank you and God bless you. Bob, Sharika, I want, I want to thank you for your sentiments, but even more importantly, I want to thank you for your partnership in this incredibly important work. Many of you have a program in, in front of you. I, I invite you now to peruse the, 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 the program. You'll see pictures and, and, and vignettes of some of our fallen heroes, and as you take the opportunity to peruse the program, I want to, uh, we'll hear a musical tribute featuring some members of the Tumwater High School Notables Choir. To our singers from, from Tom Water High School Notable Choir, thank you. Thank you so much for that beautiful music. It's now time for the traditional ringing of the bell and the reading of the names of the fallen workers. As we read the names, I, I invite you to reflect that each name rep represents more than just a person. Each name represents a family, a community a tragic and unnecessary loss. Joining us to read names, and it will be Sharika, Bob, Chaplain Jones, as well as Karen Michael, Industrial Hygiene Manager from LNI Safety and Health Division, Katherine Peterson, Claims Specialty Services Program Manager, and Mandy Keim, Director of Safety for the Association of General Contractors and a board member for Kids Chance. The Memorial Bell Ringer is a member of Tomwater Local 2409 Washington State Council of Firefighters. Nicholas Achevas, 22 Route Service Representative. 
Christopher L. Adams, 48, mover. Zakaria Ahmed, 25, driver. David Ame, 66, construction worker. Brian J. Anderson, 61, maintenance manager. Dale Archer, 60, engineer. Joseph Orient, 46, truck driver. Darian P. Atkinson, 25, emergency room technician. Luis Bastion Flores, 34, construction worker. Oliver Bastion Tres, 47, business owner. Luis Batiola, 63, lieutenant, firefighter. Greg A. Bates, 38, firefighter. Gerardo Bautista Leon, 26, construction worker. Tracy E. Berry, 55, retail manager. Tyler Baltino, 22, parts driver. Christopher L. Bray, 31, logger. Douglas Brandt, 56, nurse. Scott A. Brenneman, 52, flight test engineer. Jordan B. Brown, 29, sales associate. Jonas S. Brown, 35, security officer. Karen M. Brown, 47, correctional booking officer. Lois Baumgartner, 75, administrative assistant. Rodney Buya, 71, truck driver. Justin Barkey, 40, cook. Marilyn Byerly, 86, school assistant. Dominique Carlotta, 35, deputy sheriff. Dean Crosswhite, 52, assistant fire chief. Kong Dam, 68, machine operator. Hoya Duong, 54, truck driver. Jimmy Duchel, 88, sales associate. Frederick Dusan, 76, horse wrangler. Cindy Ira Rizman, 57, nurse manager. David Ellis, 43, painter. Wade Urban, 31, life skill instructor. Michael Erickson, 61, truck driver. Justin Evans, 33, delivery driver. Leslie Falner, 47, administrative staff. Kyle Ford, 33, security guard. Ryan Galmore, 36, deputy sheriff. Robert Garcia, 65, horse groomer. John Garner, 45, firefighter. Sergeant Gill, 36, construction worker. Merle Yestrom, 83, cement mason. Armando Gomez Reyes, 25, housekeeper. Jose L. Gonzalez Chavez, 22, farm worker. 
Brian T. Granstrom, 65, Transportation Director. Jose Guerrero Rosario, 43, Farm Worker. Gregory D. Hall, 59, Construction Foreman. Daniel F. Heberer, 57, Truck Driver. Malacio Herrera Viveros, 53, Maintenance Worker. Philip D. High, 53, Police Officer. William W. Hill, 67, Construction Superintendent. Len A. Hill, Jr., 48, Teacher. Douglas L. Howe, 69, Manufacturing Molder. Rene Waisar Hara, 44, Construction Worker. Jordan T. Jackson, 34, Police Officer. Margaret M. Jimenez, 67, Nurse. Elmer D. Joe, 63, Tank Mechanic. Fernando Juarez Lopez, 33, Roofer. Kevin K. Casper, 57, Electrician. Alvin H. Keck, 64, Piping Engineer. Joseph B. Killian, 56, Firefighter. Doyle G. Colmanston, 67, Construction Superintendent. Leland H. Knapp III, 64, Painter. David Nodler, 48, Electrician. Justin R. Crumbaugh, 38, Instacart Shopper. Nathan Lachendro, 49, Flight Test Engineer. Raymond Lamb, 59, Business Owner. Maximiliano Lara Patreca, 54, Construction Worker. Pedro Lares Lopez, 43, Drywall Installer. Troy J. Larson, 52, Sheriff Deputy. George P. Laverty II, 39, Truck Driver. Richard D. Ledford, 62, Nurse. Thomas M. Lorezka, 40, Plumber. Scott A. Martin, 62, Manufacturing Laborer. Gerald L. Massengale, 58, Insulator. Joseph Masterson, 49, Tow Truck Driver. Felix D. Malero, 83, Plumber, Steam Fitter. Ray A. Midkiff, 53, Electrician. Amos Milan Niblis, 36, Meat Processor. Chadwick J. Mitleider, 52, Firefighter. Howard F. Monta, 55, Custodian. Gavin B. Morse, 38, Pilot. Andrew D. Mosley, 58, Carpenter. Dennis W. Mulford, 84, Machinist. Oscar Navidad Velazquez, 46, Orchard Worker. Susan L. Noble, 69, Aerospace Assembler. Kenneth North, 57, Fisherman. Edward J. Norton, 53, Concrete Foreman. Kenneth K. Nyland, 85, Truck Driver. David J. Oler, 51, Truck Driver. Pete E. Orgel, 62, Laborer. Gilberto Paniagua, 59, Farm Production Worker. Mauro Partida, 61, Law Enforcement. 
Seth E. Parvin, 29, Roofer. Dan W. Patterson, 53, Firefighter. Isidoro Perez Mata, Jr., 64, Utilities Operator. David C. Perkins, 45, Firefighter. Glennis L. Piper, 42, Truck Driver. James L. Plasted, 68, Scheduler Planner. Nathan W. Precup, 33, Flight Test Engineer. Patrick J. Price, 65, Truck Driver. John M. Rondazzo, 49, Truck Driver. Justin T. Roberts, 35, Construction Laborer. David W. Robles, 29, Assistant Retail Manager. Daniel C. Rocha, 41, Police Officer. Matthew T. Runt, 44, Firefighter. Donald L. Sahota, 52, Police Officer. Christopher P. Sanders, 52, Sign Installer. Douglas W. Scroggins, 58, Business Owner. Demetrius L. Sellers, 32, Construction Worker. Barry L. Scherer, 69, Operations Manager. Jose Silva Gonzalez, 74, Grinder. Clint J. Silvas, 44, Logger. Larry J. Spawn, 74, Assistant Fire Chief. Aaron W. Spoon, 48, Rigger. Glenn E. Starks, Jr., 50, Mechanic. Adam M. Suddener, 61, Ski Resort Vice President. Michael L. Two, 35, Outreach Coordinator. Michelle M. Turner, 56, Custodian. Froland D. Valdivia, 57, Farm Worker. Oscar J. Valero, 60, Process Operator. Brian T. Van Brunt, 41, Law Enforcement Detective. Jeffrey E. Van Gompo, 60, Deputy Sheriff. Jerry R. Velasquez, 68, Curigator. Alberto Villanueva Garcia, 45, Laborer. Daniel E. Wampole, 48, Roofer. Dwayne M. Wharton, 58, Dump Truck Driver. Jason B. Winters, 43, Pilot. Please, please join me in a, a moment of silence to remember the fallen workers.
I, I've shared this with some of you in, in the past that for me, Worker Memorial Day takes on a very special meaning. It was my first day of work in Washington State and I sat here at Worker Memorial Day 25 years ago. I remember it like it was yesterday. It struck me that the work that this organization does is so important that the mission of keeping Washington safe and working is so critical. I walked away from that, that ceremony 25 years ago with a profound respect for the work that this organization does and a commitment to contribute in any way I possibly could. I came here after working for a number of years at the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA. So I, I had a sense of what work, workplace safety was all about, but being part of this community, being part of this ceremony grounded me in the importance of the work that, that we could do together. And I took it personally then, I take it personally now, and I know so many of you here share that same personal commitment, that personal value, that personal belief that we need to come together as a community and recommit ourselves to, to worker safety. LNI has been hosting this event for close to 30 years. The book that we have here on our stage represents and, and, and lists more than 2,000 names of fallen workers, preventable workplace injury, illnesses, and injuries that resulted in tragic and preventable deaths. Today, we heard the names of far too many Washington workers who lost their lives to a workplace injury or, or illness. We heard the names of 32 people who worked while working in construction in our state. Three of them were working in, a, in trenches that collapsed, including 32-year-old Demetrius Sellers, af affectionately known as Michi to his friends and family, who some of whom are, are here today. They shared with us that he was just a kind and giving person who would go above and beyond the call of duty to help others in need. We're mourning 10 young workers in their 20s. Their lives cut short through workplace tragedies just as their lives were truly beginning. Among the youngest is Jose Gonzalez Chavez, a 22-year-old farm worker who died when his tractor rolled over. Many of the workers that we honor today suffered long-term occupational illnesses as a result of their jobs. Jimmy Duchel was 88 years old when he passed away last year. His death was due to an infection caused by medical hardware. He received an industrial injury back in 1977. Jimmy and his wife Sharon were married for 66 years. COVID-19 persisted in taking the lives of more than a dozen workers in our state last year. And always alarming, there were 11 homicides of Washington workers in 2022. All but two died by gunfire. Three of them were police officers who came to work that day to protect us, to protect our communities. Amongst those killed by workplace violence was 25-year-old Armando Gomez Reyes, who was working as a housekeeper at a motel when he was fatally stabbed. We're told that he loved spending time with his family and worked hard to provide for his two beautiful daughters. The oldest is here with us today. As we hear each name read, it's important to remember these are not just names. These are not just statistics. There are neighbors. There are friends. There are coworkers. There are families. There are community. 
today is actually the tenth time that I've had the honor to host this ceremony. And I have to tell you, it, it doesn't get any easier. Um, in many ways, today represents the most difficult, but also the most important day of the year for those of us at, at Labor and Industries. And the reason for that is it reminds us of our commitment and our unwavering dedication to preventing any more people from being injured or killed on the job. Safety is not a once and done. It's a constant effort. It's every day. It's every hour. It's every minute. Our goal, our collective hope, is to eliminate workplace illnesses, injuries, and deaths. Yet I know that getting to zero fatalities is a long road. But here's, here's our challenge. Here's our opportunity. How about if we commit ourselves to going one week, one week without a single workplace fatality in our state? Once we do that, we can go two weeks. And then we can go a month and so on until we get to the time where we can come together on Worker Memorial Day as a celebration where we will not hear that bell rung even one time. In order to, I know that in order to do that, it requires a sustained commitment from each and every one of us. And so I invite you to consider what you can do individually, what we can commit to doing collectively to continue to cultivate that culture of safety, that build upon the things that we've done, fix the things that need fixing, look at the hazards of today, consider the hazards of tomorrow, and recommit ourselves today and every day to ensuring that every one of our coworkers get to go home to their families at the end of the day. And with that recommitment, I believe that we can ensure the name of each and every person who we heard today, that they didn't pass in vain, that their memory will serve as a means of motivating and reminding us of the important work that we can, that we must do together. Make that, let's make that our pledge to each other. Let's make that our pledge to our, our honored families and let, let's make that our pledge to each of, each of the more than 2,000 names that are here in our book. We know that workplace deaths and illnesses can have a profound impact on surviving family members for, for many years, for, for a lifetime. The loss doesn't go away. There's an organization called Kids Chance of Washington that can help kid, children and families of fallen workers in their time of need. Kids Chance provides scholarships to take some of the financial burden off of these families. And here to tell you a little bit more about, about Kids Chance is Mandy Keim, the Director of Safety for the Association of General Contractors and a board member of Kids Chance of Washington. Thank you, Joel. Uh, I stand in appreciation of the work of you and your team throughout the state, so thank you. I'm Mandy Keim. I'm here on behalf of Kids Chance of Washington as a board member and also as the Director of Safety for Associated General Contractors of Washington. As we stand here in reflection, I'm deeply honored to have the opportunity to recognize and remember these 129 fallen workers. Their dedication to their work and their sacrifice will never be forgotten. And it is with great humility that I stand here today in their memory. We at Kids Chance are offering our most profound sympathies and prayers. While we all yearn for a day where there are no names to be read at this remembrance event, we must also stand up for and support the families of those that we have lost. Kids Chance is a nonprofit dedicated to doing just that. Kids Chance is led by a collaborative effort of board members and volunteers that represent both business and labor. Our volunteers and donors are committed to making dreams possible for the children and families of fallen workers. 
Since our inception in Washington State in 2001, we have awarded over 160 scholarships valued at over $650,000 to the families of workers seriously injured or fatally injured at work. We know that the family left behind can feel lost or hopeless, so we endeavor to offer financial support and keep hope alive <clears throat> through education and career goals in apprenticeship programs, vocational or technical schools, and undergraduate college education. We are a registered 501c3 nonprofit run completely through volunteerism so that our funds can do the most good. You can learn more about our work online at kidschancewa.org. As I studied the names on the list and their tributes, I was reminded of the ripple effects that one life can leave behind. Each name we honor today represents family, friends, colleagues, and a community that mourns them. A legacy that remains in the hearts of many. Our purpose at Kids Chance is to pour hope back into those lives left in that ripple that they may go forth and chase dreams and passions despite the loss that they endure. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Mandy. Chaplain Jones rejoins us now for the benediction. Shall we pray? Gathered in our various faiths, we give thanks for the blessings of our community. As we share in our common bond, let us hold fast to that which is good, render to no person evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the needy and the afflicted, and honor all people. We remember our comrades now departed this life. We honor them for their loyalty, for their good deeds, and for their friendship. May they rest in peace. Enable us as we leave this place to carry forth this prayer into the coming weeks. In the name of all that is righteous, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Jones. And thank you to everyone who participated in our Worker Memorial Day tribute. Governor Inslee, thank you again for part participating for, for your words. Chaplain Jones, thank you to our name readers, our musicians and singers, our sign language and, and, and Spanish interpreters, members of our LNI community, members of our planning committee who put so much of yourselves into making today's event possible. And especially, I, I wanna thank family members for joining us today, whether in person or virtually, to remember your loved ones and allow us the opportunity to, to honor their memories. We've added each name that was read today to our memorial book that you see here. We keep this book in permanent display in our rotunda as a constant reminder for all of us and all of our guests that come to this building each and every day of the important work that we need to do together. For our families, if you had friends or other family members who couldn't be here in person today or watch online, there will be a video of today's event on our website. It's also on TVW's website, and we would be happy to send a DVD of today's ceremony to, to anyone if, if that would be something that you would, you would want. For the next part of our ceremony, we're going to move out to our memorial garden. And uh, for those in terms of directions, if we go out the door, turn right as we leave the, the auditorium, and then turn left to go outside to the garden. There you'll see a memorial garden bell that was donated by the Washington Building Construction Trades Council. After our ceremony at the garden, we'll head back inside for refreshments in the, in the auditorium. 
again, thank you all for joining us, and I invite all of our family members to please feel free to join, join us outside, and we invite you to have the opportunity to ring our bell and speak, to, speak a bit about your loved ones. Thank you again. This is a portion of our ceremony that really is yours. And so what, we, what I want to do is invite any, any of you who would like to come up, to ring our bell, to take the microphone, and if you'd like to speak the name of your family member, your fallen he friend, fa fallen hero, please do. And if you want to share just a little bit with us of, the, of their memory so that we can come together as a community to honor those who have fallen and to remember the importance of the work that we need to do each and every day to prevent others from having to be here at the bell. I'm here uh, for my cousin, Demetrius. Yes, uh, better, yeah, we call him Michi. He died on uh, 4th of July last year, and uh, it's just been kind of hard. He died in a trench collapse. He was working. They tried to, uh, the guy he was working for, they tried to hurry up and get it done on 4th of July because L and I wasn't out. And uh, our whole family, we was wondering where he was at. And uh, he went to go try to make a couple bucks, try to buy some fireworks. And, uh, you know, we're going to miss him a lot. And, like, that day forever has changed. So I just want to come up and just speak for him. Our family really miss him. Welcome anyone to ring the bell and speak if you if you choose to. My name is Barbara. I'm Demetrius' mother, and I'm I'm very thankful to be here today. Um, I appreciate the memorial service in honor of all of the people that have lost their lives. I know that my life will forever change. He was my firstborn. And so when I got that call that day that it was emergency, I was not expecting him to be deceased when I got there. His birthday was April the 10th. He shares a birthday with my sister, Janie, that's sitting right there. We still celebrate it as he was with us because they always celebrated their birthday together every year. And so we'll, we'll all just miss them so much. We all love them and we thank God for the opportunity and the time that we have spent with him. And we know that life goes on, but he'll always be remembered in a special way. And we'll always tell the kids that come along how their uncle or cousin, how he passed away. He passed away doing what he loved. He loved to work. And we waited for two days until they brought his body out of the trench. And when it was all over, we stayed there. We shook hands with every firefighter, every construction worker that walked up that hill because they brought closure to our lives. And we're very thankful for that. So as time go on, we'll always remember him. And I thank you, thank you for this beautiful memorial service.
Alice. Okay, I'll hold that. Danny David. I also want to thank everyone and also Elle and I for this beautiful memorial. I am here for my husband, Renee Huizarjara, who was and will always be the most amazing husband who not only taught me and my family what so special life can be at a hard, miserable time of my life when I met him. And for coming here and doing this means a lot to me and everyone else. And so I never speak like past tense for him because I still feel that he is here and he will always be here. His spirit, um, his feeling, I always feel him. I know. And I'm a very spiritual person who believes that. And it's been really tough. He actually was at a also working at a construction site and he fell from the top and I also received that horrible call that I will never forget and that was on July 15th when he fell and he passed away here in Seattle on July 19th I know that I I will see him one day I have faith that we will one day be together again. But until then, I know that he will be with me forever and my family. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm sorry. My name is Doris Johnson, and I'm here on behalf of Demetrius. We call him Michi. This is my family here. Michi was a love child. He had a beautiful spirit inside and out. And he had this smile that touched your heart so deeply. And he was the kind of kid was, you know, he didn't argue with people. He just had this, this lovely spirit. I mean, his his soul was so beautiful. And when Barbara told me that he passed away, I didn't understand what happened because I was in disbelief. And I'm going like, I don't know what you mean. How did this happen? It can't be true. And I called my mom and I said, I think something happened to Michi, but I still can't 
I couldn't process it because it was unexpected. But he's a person who you always remember and tell. He will never be forgotten. And um, I just love him dearly. That's from our older brother, Kyle. Uh, he died last year on Valentine's Day. He was working security officer downtown Shelton, taken out by a truck at 60 miles an hour. So I guess I... I don't do well talking in front of people, but I want to let you all know that we're here for David Ellis. He passed away on November 7, 2022. He was on his way to work in a work van when the van crashed and is still under investigation. He was an awesome dad. I would give anything to blink my eyes and have him back. I see his work, his uh, truck, due to my granddaughter. And some days I see it and all I want to do is cry because he's not here. I would give one, I'd give my life one day of him standing in front of me and giving me a hard time. Just to hear that again, I would give anything for that. Thank you guys and have a good day. Good afternoon. My name is Crispina Loresca, and I am the mother of Thomas Loresca, who passed away May 23. It's going to be almost one year when he, when he was gone, and he's not physically present in our family. Thomas is a plumber, and he was called to work on a job in Spanaway. I was out of the country when I heard a call from my son here in United States, and he said, Mom, you need to come home. Something happened very bad. And then... The police officer talked to me and said he is breaking the news that my son is already dead. He was he was shot in the beacon plumbing truck and he killed him. So I was only about maybe four, five to six days in our country because I have to attend the burial of my brother and I need to come back here in Seattle. And I thought I could see my son right away, but it took me a month before I can see him personally. My son is a very loving son and he's the one who's helping me financially. And now, he's gone. He is very loved by a lot of his friends and lots of relatives. And until now, they keep talking about him and they cannot move on without Thomas. 
So I thank you for the labor and industry for the very nice uh, celebration that you have come up with. And and I really, we really appreciate it. Thank you, Director. I'm Sonia Brown, and my son is Jonas Brown. He's listed in the program, and he contracted COVID at work where he was a security officer in Port Angeles, Washington. Um, I just, um, it was long, almost six months that he was over at Harborview fighting this awful virus. And, but I'm so thankful to the LNI department for their assistance and to the team at Harborview and those at Olympic Memorial Hospital in Port Angeles that cared for Jonas and for all those people that supported him through cards and prayers. The prayers, above all, were just so meaningful to us. And God saw us through this, and we know that Jonas is in a better place. <laughs> and we're going to see him someday again to thank you. So sorry. Thank you. Thanks to this is the trail. And would invite anyone who wants to come up and simply ring, and ring the bell. If there, if you choose not to speak, but speak simply from your heart. Hello, everybody. I normally don't like to talk, and it kind of took me a lot of courage to do this. Um, I Wolf was or is Rene Wisfarajara's sister-in-law. Who did consider me a lot like his daughter. And I was with my sister the day that we had to drive hours first to Huanachi where they had to air flight him. I kinda haven't talked about the traumatic experience, but I'm glad that I made it up here to ring the bell for him. So, thank you.
everybody, you know. This is, this is from my dad, David Ellis. Um, I love you, daddy. Esto es en honor a René, que a pesar de que fue poco el tiempo que lo conocí, pero fue una persona a todo dar, más que amigo, un hermano. Le doy gracias a Dios por el tiempo que lo conocí. Y pronto nos veremos, primero Dios. Buenas, buenas tardes a todos ustedes. Gracias por, por el tiempo que estamos aquí este día y por este evento que hicieron a memoria de todos los fallecidos. Y 
quiero darle las gracias a René allá donde está arriba, porque fue, fue un buen hijo. Él, él era mi, mi ah, yerno y era como un hijo para nosotros. Y era un buen papá también. Yo quiero darle las gracias también por el a Dios por el tiempo que no lo dejó. Pero un día tenemos fe y en Cristo que un día nos vamos a encontrar con Él arriba, donde quiera que nos encontremos. Gracias. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Labor and Industries, I want to thank you for sharing a small part of your hearts with us today. And my commitment to you is each ring of that bell is a recommitment from all of us here today to come to work each day and do everything that we can to prevent future tragedies. Thank you for sharing a bit of your lives a bit, a, a bit of your, a bit of your family members, and and our hearts go out to you, as well as our passion and our commitments, to prevent these things from ever happening again. I want to invite all of our family members. If if you'd like to come back inside, we have some refreshments. We're also going to leave the the bell ringer out here for any of you that want to have a more intimate, private moment and have an opportunity to ring the to ring the bell in in, in a more private setting. Please feel free. Again, thank you all for joining us today. Our hearts go out to you, and please know that uh, we so appreciate your willingness to be part of today's ceremony and to share a little bit of, of your lives with us. Thank you, everyone.